Hi guys, this is Angel from PRDB Entertainment. Welcome to another tutorial of the Unreal Engine. Now, and this tutorial is going to be really quick and fast. Now, this is about the event graph and about variables. Now, I want to explain something. Let's get into a third person project here. Let's get into a third person character. Now, in here we get the interface of the event graph, of the blueprint for this third person character. Right here we have, we are in the tab of the event graph. Now in here you have the components, you know, the, the components you can add particles, you can add collisions, you can add meshes, you can add cameras, you can add a bunch of things which is for the blueprint and different other options that you can do. Now we also have our graphs. Now you can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, twenty, a thousand graphs if you want with different setup. In this case, we're just going to use the default one that, that it starts when you open up a blueprint. Now we get the variables here on the left with this one I'm going to delete it because I was working with these ones now we got two variables which are floats these are the ones that we have right here on the setup of the character so we can get the character rotating and moving around the game now each time you click on one of these variables you get different properties here now these properties here from the default value it comes up when you compile the system when you compile the, the game now when you create a new one you need to compile it first you can change the name if you want, but you need to compile it first so you can get the value of whatever it is, uh, whatever variables that you're working on. Now, on the top, we can compile, we can save, we can browse, we can search, we can hide. We have the class settings, the class defaults, we have the simulate, and also the button for play so you can test your game. We have the construction script, which is gonna, we're gonna be talking about this probably more in the future. We have the viewport where you can see the the blueprint the, the actor that you have the mesh or whatever is that you have in there now in this case we're going to be we're going to keep on the event graph <coughs> now let's create a new variable now let's create a new variable here and let's start by creating a boolean a boolean if you don't know what a boolean is basically a boolean what it does is that it is going to tell if the value is going to be true or if it's going to be false now you have different options here to work with the boolean it's really really helpful when you use uh, booleans on the on your project a lot of people don't like to use them they use them only in cases they need to get something if it's true or, for, or if it's false but in, in my case I use it a lot I use it a lot and it works so well now the boolean you can have a mix of different nodes with it you can use the sequence you can use the branch the branch is really important when you're comparing something if it's true or not because it gives you the option if it's true you can do one setting and if it's false you can do another one it has the condition which is the value of the boolean that we have uh, or, or, the, or the booleans that we have or that we are working with so in this case I'm just gonna get this one I'm gonna get the value so in this case we get the variable which in this moment the default value I think is false yes because it's not checked now if you check that uh, value every time the game starts this variable his default value is true if it's unchecked is the false value is going to be false now you can also set the value from just setting up the the variable here now to get it running let's say the probably it starts on the event game play so you can link link this with the event begin play and as soon as the game starts it reads whatever setup you gave here if it was true or false now the other variable I'm going to be talking about is about the integer. Before before we keep talking about the next variable, let's keep on the boolean. So right here, let's go to the branch. Like I told you guys, a branch is used for the condition of a boolean. So if the boolean is true or, or false, it will know in here as soon as it reads the variable. So if it's true, it's going to do one option, and if it's false, it's going to do another one now we have also the sequence which is used a lot which is you can start different types of events you can add more pins to add more setups so this can be i don't know start loading text start loading videos start loading textures start loading messages start loading terrain you can do different things with the sequence this these two are very 
very very important now if you want to compare booleans if it's equal or not you just need to go to the section where booleans are so you can compare if it's not boolean if it is if it's equal or and so you got different types of options this is really important that you learn how to work with these now with the integer right here i'm going to change this integer integer basically is numbers so everything is about numbers there's no text in it you can use it to calculate to get percentage also in the float you can use to get percentage most of the time the float is used to get percentage but in, it depends on how you're programming your game okay so remember always to mark your variables as public that's very important so you can call in the values of these variables from other places from other blueprints from other scenes so what i mean by that is if the integer right here i said that the value that it has inside is 50 and you create probably another blueprint that it calls this blueprint which is the third person character and it reads whatever the new var underscore one has for value when it calls it and reads it is going to tell him that it's 50 and from there you can do whatever options that you want with that value it's the same thing for uh text for strings for booleans or uh different other you know variables that we have here for vector rotate and transforming whatever it doesn't it doesn't matter you can always get the values by calling them but you need to set this on public that is very 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 important as soon as you compile like i said you get your properties here and also the value for those now let's hit the vector here so you can see the options now in the vector you get the x the y and the z as you can see you have different options in each one so you need to understand how to work with all of these first now let's delete this right here so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to create something simple just to show you how it works and let's get the keyboard the key w so every time i press the w it's going to do some setup and when i release it it's going to do another setup so i'm going to create a boolean here this one is going to be walking is it walking okay set it on public so i'm going to set this one twice so i'm just going to copy the second one i'm going to put link these two on the top these two on the bottom so the first one is going to be true and the second one is going to be false now uh by a second by a second time if you don't know what exactly we're talking about this way up here i recommend that you go to one of my past videos where we talk about the variables about flows about booleans about integers all that so you can try to understand how these work now in here let's say that i want to print on the screen print string i want to print let me copy this copy second one for the second one So let's put here walking standing let's compile so changes take effect and let's play so every time i press the w if you see in the left top corner walking standing walking standing now the idea you probably can say you probably I, I already know that it's not about that it's all that you can do when you start using these setups now the best thing that i want you to, uh, the, the thing that i want you to understand about the print screen right here or the uh, print string my bad they should have put i don't know print screen because it shows on the screen but anyway it's a string what is printing so it's basically text so what i want you to understand here is that every time you're working on the setup i recommend that you put a print string first to see that if it's working or not the setup that you're doing if you see that you get the string on the screen depending on the setup that you are doing with whatever variables or setup or nodes that you have then you can continue to the second step or to the next step of your settings now let's break this links here these links and let's say that in here we have strings let's say that we want to work with a variable of string so in here let's just choose the variable of string and let's put here text 
value is as a name. Uh, you can use any name that you want. I just want to put this one because they are easy. I want to remember them when I call them or when I want to search for them. So in here, let's put this one instead of twice. So I'm going to copy the second one and put it here. So I'm going to connect the ones below and the ones above. And the values for these ones, as you can see, they get deleted because they're going to start reading the string, the text from these two. As you can see, we used only one variable twice, which is going to have different text. Walking and standing. It doesn't matter if you use it twice, three, four, five, ten, twenty times if you want or more. It doesn't matter. It depends only on the setups that you're giving. At least in this one, when it's get when it's pressed, it's gonna set the string, the value inside for this variable, for this string variable, as walking. And when it's released, it's going to set the value of the string value of this variable as standing, and then it's going just to show it on the screen. It's compiled, so it can take the effect. It takes the effect. We hit the W. We released it. Walking and standing. So now let's try to do something more. Let's try to use, I don't know, probably the integer. So I'm going to create a new blueprint here. It's going to be an actor. I'm going to put here ball. Add a collision and a mesh, nothing else. Collision is going to be a sphere and a static mesh. Static mesh. I'm not going to change the name, so I'm just going to add a mesh to this. It's going to be sphere, which is big. There we go. Put it down. Let's add a shape to this uh, material. There you go. So compile so you can get other options. So in here, well, let's go to the event graph. As you can see, we have the same same interface. The only difference that we have in this one when you create a new blueprint is that you get uh, three events right here. The begin to play, which is when the game starts. The actor begin overlap when it touches something from another actor. And the event tick. We're not going to be using these two, only the event after begin overlap. Now let's create a variable in this one. And in this one, is going to be integer. Okay. So let's put the name. Plus one. Now what I want to do is like every time it overlaps, it's going to count plus one, plus one. The total that it has on the value, plus one. Then it's going to loop again, the total plus one. It's going to do another loop again, the total plus one, every time that it overlaps. So in this case, oh like I'm gonna get the value and I'm gonna set it also. And now we're going to right click and we're going to tell him that we're going to be making calculations here. Integer plus integer. Okay, set this here. So the total value by default is zero plus one that we have here. And it's going to take that total value, it's going to set it on the variable once again. In the first, uh, as soon as it starts uh, the overlap, the first time it's going to be zero plus one, which is one. The total is going to be one. When it touches again, that it loops and makes like a loop, it's going to be already, it's going to have the value already as one. So it's going to be one plus one is two. It loops again when it touches again on the overlap, two plus one is three. It's going to keep doing that every time we overlap with the, with the ball. Okay, so now we need to print this on the screen. Print string. So we know that it's working. Uh, in this case, we're going to convert the integer to text. So it just shows us uh, whatever text is inside. Compile. Let's put the ball right here. Let's play. So if we go to the ball, you can see one, two, three, four, five. So it doesn't matter how much uh, time you get off or from overlapping. It still stores the value. And every time that you get near to it, you can see 
that will keep counting and counting and counting and counting. Now the idea of this is that you can use this, probably maybe, I don't know, some tips or recommendations that you can use, that you can use it for points, for counting points, coins, money, uh, ammo for weapons, energy, health bar. Well, health and energy bar most of the time is used with the float, but you can also use the integer. It depends, but it's not gonna count by percentage. It's gonna count only by numbers. So it's kind of different there. It depends on what you want to do. If you're gonna have round the numbers like one to five, five to 10 and things like that, I recommend that you can use the integer. If not, if it's gonna be running by percentage, I recommend that you use the float. Now, that part is very, this part of this tutorial is really easy. It was something simple that I wanted to create because I didn't have anything talking about the event graph. So simple variables like these ones are used a lot. Now, for the Boolean, like I said, or probably a, if I said before, the branch is really important. So you can actually tell them the condition of that Boolean that you're working with so it can take uh, it can take different actions if it's true or if it's false plus you have the sequence so start playing around with those because it will help you a lot trust me it, it will help you a lot and you probably will do more things than than you're doing right now so next tutorial about the unreal engine is we're going to dig in we're going to dig in a little more into the variables and the components and how you can mix them up and how you can play around with both of them to have uh, different values, how to get different values, how we're going to call different values or different variables or objects from other blueprints that we have on our project. That is more like casting to the blueprint and from there you can get the values and you know the variables and everything you can play around but we're just going to make it simple really fast so on the next tutorial everything is going to about uh calling our values from variables from one object to another that's our next tutorial well if you haven't subscribed don't forget to subscribe if you're new i hope you like the video keep up subscribe you're gonna you're gonna like uh, all the new videos that we're gonna be uploading here on prdb entertainment so guys thank you i'm so grateful that you're still here a lot of people has commented me back i was reading all those comments yesterday and today and i thank all of you guys for staying here on on the channel prdb entertainment it's great to have you guys here i'll see you guys next time i'll be streaming i'm going to play fortnite i'm going to play apex or Dragon Ball Fighters right now. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye